What's going on, cryptocurrency universe? It's the Bitcoin miner here, guys. I hope everybody's doing well. Today's video, we are going to discuss cooling your rock pies, your orange pie, your raspberry pies, or any of your other pies. Although I specifically did testing on the new orange pie five uh, with the latest chip. So just for as a reference base, some of the older ones may consume more power and you may not see the same results, but ultimately the same heat sinks should give similar uh, results, but we'll see. Uh, leave in the comments if you are seeing something drastic, but again, I'm only mainly testing this on Orange Pie 5s. All right, I bought every heat sink, every cooler, everything I could get my hands on, including a couple more that I already sent back that were just... Yeah, crap on a cracker. It was horrible. <laughs> yeah, I just they were done. Um, so I pretty much kept anything that was worth a darn and had a chance to cool. Um, and don't forget, guys, it, if you go back and check the video out on cables and why your cables really do matter. Uh, just El Cheapo's, there's a big difference, especially in a power draw ratio, how many times you have to replace them over time. So... I'm curious in comments, guys, as you guys watch this, which one do you think is going to be the best heat sink? Um, and we're going to do this in two different scenarios. One in an open air scenario, uh, like this one or this one over here. Uh, then there's also the little computer case box ones. Those are the ones that I got sent back, hint, hint. Um, and then we have forced air. Uh, oh, excuse me. And then also the tower one where it is forced air, but it's kind of enclosed forced air where you're just kind of blowing a fan down on the heat sink itself. And then this style over here, which is meant to go into a forced air chamber, uh, something more like a uh, existing server case, something like this, where you can kind of already use the air that's flowing through a, a chamber. Um, so there's no actual air on each individual board. You're just maybe kind of like an ASIC in a sense where there's one fan and there's, they're going through a tunnel uh, to try to cool them. So that's the concept. You can kind of line these up um, and cool several of them in a row. Sorry, I wasn't pointing it over there. But uh, you can line them up and point them in a row, have a fan behind here, and it pulls the air behind it. So, all right. Go ahead in the comments, guys, before the video keeps going. Uh, go ahead and hit pause. Tell me which one do you think is the best in each scenario. Do you think this one outperforms this one or this version, more or less? They're similar. Um, and then which one do you think outperforms in this version? Which heat sink? So these are the type of heat sinks. There are three copper heat sinks and one aluminum. Oh, excuse me, two aluminum, the large aluminum block. So these are the aluminum ones right here and then the copper ones. Now, um, let's just go ahead and jump to the chase, guys. You would think uh, these would be, this one would be better than this one. Uh, this would probably be the worst because of the, the aluminum. And so would this one also be the worst. Uh, it actually turns out that this one is the best. We're getting extremely stable temperatures, rather it be in this type of setting or this type of setting. So if you look at this tower here, you can see that I've mix matched them between the small copper one down at the bottom. Uh, well, not the straight copper. So you can see the copper at the top, which is this one over here to the right. And then the very bottom one, which is the next one to it, right there with the prongs. Believe it or not, in this type of scenario, the top version, the ones you see everywhere on Amazon, the thicker, they're fairly heavy, copper ones work better uh, than the ones that are 10 millimeters tall with the little prongs. Those things, just they're doing, it does nothing. And they're ultra light, by the way. So if you think that these prong versions are going to work better, uh, I was sorely wrong um just the ones that are everywhere you see work the best with a direct airflow on it now when i say the best i still pretty high temperatures like 78 c uh, especially in something like this but it's under 80 <laughs> it keeps it under 80 and the bottom one was above 80 we're talking like 85 c um now when we get to the aluminum version the aluminum is not very stable at all 
Uh, we're still, you know, a little uh, cooler than the copper because of the height and the uh, size. So we're, you know, maybe 86, excuse me, 76 C, maybe 70, uh, yeah, 76 C ish, 75 C, but nothing compared to the next one, the copper one with the fin on the top. And they're actually pretty cheap. They're $20 for 10, uh, so they're $2 a piece. They're the cheapest ones. Well, not cheaper than the aluminum ones. The aluminum ones are about 20 to 50 cents a piece. Uh, but, you know, for $2 a piece, they're really cheap uh, compared to all the other copper ones. I'll put a link down in the description for them. Uh, those are maintaining, in this setup, about a 73C and fairly stable, not jumping around at all. Between this one and this one, any other box, case ones, the other two I tried were just worthless. ADC area. Um, this one's the best. I call this the ice cooler. Um, this is this is the best. It keeps it right around 73-ish C, depending on a lot of factors. But it's definitely reasonable, and it works. And now we're using a thermal pad at the bottom. I thought about gluing it. We're going to try some different things. Um, the downside is how well does it stay on and... Uh, do we really need the brackets and some stuff? So I think we can test that. But as is, out of the box, hands down, that's the best. This thing, you can't even run it out of the box. It's horrible. I mean, you, you could put it in a forced air box and it works good. But it looks like it would keep it really cool. The large heat sink, nah, nope. I mean, we're in 85, 87 range. It's just not worth running at all. All right, now, back over to our tower test over here. The aluminum ones were acceptable in a forced air case, uh, but very high. I mean, not really acceptable. We're talking like 78C. Under 80, 78C, but under 80. Uh, it also depends where you are in the box. If you get too high in the box, it gets hotter. It also has to do with the airflow in the box. So we're going to have to test some box designs. Uh, in a crunch, the large one, the large aluminum block, like this one over here, over the large surface area, works the best actually if you cannot get the copper ones i would just use that large aluminum one with a thermal pad stick it on but you need a forced air it keeps it cooler than the tall ones now i will say uh the tall ones are turned backwards we did that on purpose um, i'm sure you're gonna put that in the comments but it's done on purpose uh just because they're not all gonna get great airflow and i'm trying to put it in a medium case scenario to make sure that they're able to maintain temperatures but in a forced air case you can just use the aluminum ones it's really not gonna matter you're right, right around the 75c um copper ones is the way to go i mean you're getting them in the forced air case, I was seeing them as low as 55C in some cases, especially the lower ones. Uh, and it depends on... Now, these are not all equal, actually. It has to do with the way that they were adhered. So, some of them are just using thermal paste or uh, thermal glue. Um, and some of them have thermal glue and thermal paste combinations. And then there's one where I tried winging it out. By the way, winging it out did not make a difference. I think if you fan them, you took the... Uh, time and effort to fan them all out uh, it would make a bigger difference but just winging two out really quickly did not make a significant difference worth a while now also uh, the bottom one the top and then they skip it starts at the bottom there's thermal paste in the middle with thermal glue around it so it's giving better conductivity it's about 10 times better conductivity with thermal uh, con uh, paste versus thermal glue uh it's they are significantly significantly more cooler than the ones with just thermal glue i would say on average about 3c ish maybe four it's hard to tell because the stack difference i would have to do two stacks side by side to get a better uh, example but it was a pain it wasn't very easy and very time consuming um, so I would lean towards just using the thermal glue and kind of being done with it and accepting the sub 70, 65, 68 C's and just running with it. You know, it was fine. Um, all right, guys, I just wanted to share the knowledge, uh, about what I've learned, what directions I'm going, um, what I'm thinking about. And, oh, one other thing I'd like to point out is putting coolers on the Ram and the other components of these boards. In a forced air scenario, it does not matter. 
uh, they actually seem to be hotter um, than without it. And I'm not really sure why or why not, but just slightly hotter. Uh, but in a forced air, you don't need it. In a non-forced air, there is no room in this one, and you don't seem to need it either for whatever reason. This one, we didn't check it. And this one over here seems fine too. Uh, but it also depends on your use case, I think. For Varus mining, we're only using the CPU. We're not really using the RAM. So you may want to put heat sinks on the RAM if you have a different use case. Um, that could be considered worth it. All right, guys. Remember, mine on. Keep your cell phones going. Uh, I did mention the cables. Your cables do matter, whether it's a cell phone, a Pi, or whatever it might be. Cooling. You guys can also, remember, find the heat sinks on the back of these things. And you can apply them like this. To help alleviate some of the heat reduce thermal throttling there is um you can always pop off the backs but you guys remember join discord the various discord go to the man the mining channel and you'll find a lot of information in there all right thanks again guys for watching remember to like subscribe and stay tuned we'll see you in the next video